Hello, today I'd like to show you how I would put on a bias binding to a scalloped edge quilt. So I've already got my quilt here, which I've cut my scallops on, and I've shown how to do that in a previous uh, quilting tips and techniques video. And I've made my bias binding, again, another video that I've already done. And now I'm going to show you how I'm going to apply that onto these um, nice, gently curving scallops. So what I've got is my bias binding, which I've joined up my whole length, and I've trimmed off the end and I've just pressed over about half an inch. I need to have the point um, up high. I'm actually applying my binding. I'm going to be doing the whole thing by machine. So I'm applying it to the back of my quilt because I'm going to flip it and sew it down to the front. If you are wanting to hand sew your binding, you would want to be sewing it onto the front side and flipping it to the back to hand sew in the normal way. But because I do mine by machine, I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to start off with my point with a nice pressed over half an inch somewhere near um, one of the in bits of the scallop not right out on the outside because I want to leave myself a little bit of room for when I bring the other end in so not right in the corner not right on the outside and you could put a pin in if you wanted to um, I'm not a big fan of pins because they usually get me and then I'm going to go to the sewing machine so I'm just going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance so I've got my quarter inch foot on and I'm now with, with the bias binding it's a little bit stretchy so you've got to allow for that but we want it to be stretchy because we want it to curve nicely round those curving scallops. So when I do my binding I like to start sewing up near the end there and I do a little back stitch and I come in maybe an inch or so, it's not particularly critical at this stage and I'll stop there and this is so that I can leave myself a little bit open for when I bring the other end of the binding in when we get all the way around the quilt. So now I'm going to fold that over. I generally don't pre-press my bindings um, in half. I know that some people prefer to do that. I find that this uh, works better for me and probably in particular when it's biased because you want it to have a little bit of movement in it. So you can see because it's biased it's curving nicely around that curve but I'm going to leave a gap now of maybe a couple of inches from that fold there before I start sewing so that there's a little area that I can tuck the other end in when I get there. And now I'm just going to keep on going. If you have a needle down position on your sewing machine this would be helpful because we're going to be pivoting at the little corners. So when you put this binding on you don't want it to be too loose and floppy, you don't want it to be too tight that it pulls it in. You do need to apply just a small amount of tension as you go so that it curves and sits nicely. So keep an eye on your quarter inch edge there and you want to, to pivot at the, at the point, quarter of an inch in, of, on your point, of your internal point there. I don't know what that's called. Have to work that one out. So now I've lifted my foot, I've left the needle down, but I'm going to pivot the fabric. So that means there's going to be a little bit of bunching. You can probably get away with just pulling the back piece just a little bit so that it sits because you want that edge to be sitting nicely against the curve of the scallop again and then continue sewing. So it looks a little bit fiddly but it's okay when you're doing it. So again just a little bit of tension but not too much. You don't want to pull this really tight or anything as you go all the way around. So just take it gently. Do another one of those little pivots. So come right into that point. Leave the needle down and pivot that around so that you're heading in the right direction again. Pop your foot down and away you go. So you're just going to go all the way around your quilt. So it doesn't really matter whether you're doing it on the front or the back, this is, method is the same. As I said, I'm going to roll mine to the front. So I'm just going to continue on around. And, and as you can see, I'm coming up to a join in the binding. Because I joined it across and I've pressed my seams open, that's not going to cause any problems at all. So just continuing on all the way around the quilt in this same way. So I've been all the way around my quilt. And I'm just at this last little pivot. And I'll show you how I tuck the ends in when I get there. So 
do the last pivot and I'm back to where I started. So exciting. So as I come up here, I've got this little bit that I left flapping open. So I'm going to stitch till I'm kind of already overlapping. And then I can cut away any excess that I've got there and tuck that in to that bit that's coming around the corner there. Probably looks a bit fiddly, I'll get my fingers out of the way. And I wouldn't be panicking too much if you've got a little bit, if you can see that sticking out over here. We're trying to keep this curve looking nice with that edge tucked in because we can trim away that little bit that's sticking out. And so a little bit of a reverse stitch there to hold that and I'm all the way around. So I have got a little bit sticking up here so I can just trim that away so that it's neat with the edge of my quilt there. And the other thing I'm going to do now is go around on all these little um, V bits in between and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to cut a little notch out into the V of the binding V notch and I'm also going to cut into the V of the quilt but not don't cut your stitching <laughs> obviously just cut a little notch now we probably don't really need that but it just gives us a little bit of room to move so I'm going to go around and do that to all the corners so that when we bring the binding over it's got a little bit of room to move and get out of the way and then it'll just sit nicely in the in those little valleys for you so snip a little V into the binding and just a little into the into the corner there on the quilt side and uh, then I'll come and show you how I'm going to stitch that down. So I've finished doing all my clipping, I've clipped in all my corners, I've done my little V in the back and a little slit in, so in all the little valley corners and now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch my binding down to the front because that's how I like to do it. As I mentioned earlier you could do could have put it on to the front of your quilt and be taking it to the back to go by hand if you would like to do it that way. So I'm going to bring it over to the front so you can see that it wants to roll naturally around those curves which is really nice and I'm going to stitch it right close to the fold which will most likely be just past the previous row of stitching when I bring that over a nice snug fit over the fold there. So we'll just start, it doesn't really matter where you start and stop, we'll just start here and keep on going. So close to your fold. The needle down position is really helpful. Again we're going to be pivoting in those little valley corners and uh, just going, keeping on going around this curve. It's quite nice to be able to stop and know that it's not going to jump around with your needle left in the fabric like that. So come all the way down to that point there. Leave the needle in and just rearrange the quilt a little bit. It just helps a little bit to be able to maneuver that around whilst you're pivoting it there. So it doesn't give you a really sharp point doing it this way, but it works out quite nicely. So we'll just go around this little bit here. We'll do another little pivot. in those little corners it allows us to move this around just a little bit more freely when we're in those points there. So you can see that it's just a matter of working your way around the quilt and it's coming up quite nicely around here. So I'll um, keep going on this and uh, come back to you shortly. So I've been all the way around my quilt. I'm just just about back where I started. So exciting. There's always such a good feeling when you get to this stage of the binding. That's it. Snip my little thread. 
threads and show you the quilt. So I've got this fun scalloped edge. It's all nicely curvy, it's got little valleys. If we look on the back you can see that it's got a nice roll to it so if you were doing it the other way around that's what you would see on the front which for some of you that may be your preference. In the meantime that's how to do a scalloped edge binding on a quilt and uh, there's this one that I've done as well which has got a similar so I've, when I cut my binding I cut it two inches wide and I found that that was quite sufficient to go around that edge nicely and on this one here with the scallop with the little points in the corners I had cut this binding two and a quarter inches wide so it was just that little bit wider to deal with but otherwise everything has been done the same way I've done this quilt here and I think that's great fun it's it's a nice edge for a difference it's a very pretty it makes a very pretty edge for a quilt um, it all sits nicely so there you have it I used that a scalloping uh, ruler tool to help me cut them I've done a video on how I did all the preparation for it and here's how I've done the binding so Hopefully I'm going to see lots of scalloped edge quilts shortly. Thank you.